today i will be discussing about directional stability directional control and then later on lateral stability and lateral control you know by now longitudinal stability and what was the understanding that if this airplane is flying this is the tail plane and if there is any angle of attack disturbance coming like this positive angle then it will generate a lift and this lift will give moment about center of gravity nose down so we say for a positive alpha the tail is producing a nose down moment which is negative and we say cm alpha is negative so the contribution of tail is towards making the aircraft statically stable in the longitudinal plane right today we'll be talking about directional stability and what is the directional motion if this is the airplane if this is the airplane let's say and this is the x axis this is the y axis and this is z axis then directional motion is about z axis like this okay and we'll see that this horizontal stabilizer was helping for longitudinal stability now this vertical stabilizer this whole vertical stabilizer will help to give directional stability and as in longitudinal case elevator was giving longitudinal control that is when i was pulling the elevator up the airplane also will pitch up and when i was putting elevator down the aircraft also will pitch down so we are discussing this in terms of longitudinal control and this is the elevator control similarly for directional case you could easily see if we deflect the rudder this way and the airplane is moving in this direction so it will generate a force in this direction and that force will give a yawing moment taking the nose towards left and if i do it like this then the force will be towards me and this will give a yawing moment which will take the right wing back right as per as convention is concerned we will assume that which everybody has following this convention that when i am flying like this rudder toward left is a positive rudder deflection and rudder towards right is a negative deflection so this keep this back of your mind now we'll go to the classroom and we'll discuss in detail we have just now seen the vertical tail or you call vertical stabilizer and also a rudder and the purpose of today's discussion will be on directional stability i draw the diagram for the axis system this is x this is y and this is z and we know that when we are discussing longitudinal stability longitudinal static stability we are talking about motion about y axis that is pitch up pitch down but now once we are talking about directional stability we'll be talking about motion about z axis and the convention is if this is these are the two wings if the right wing going back the yawing moment is positive that is if right wing going back that convention wise that will be yawing moment positive and left wing going back is yawing moment negative what is the yawing moment yawing moment is the moment about z axis right so as far as yawing moment which is about z axis and convention by positive if right wing going back while flying going back right and this is negative when you see right wing going back you hang moment positive and when left wing going back this left wing going back then your yawing moment is negative right who causes this yawing moment you can understand that if some motion has to be there about z axis then the force has to come like this right so for example if i take this case if i see vertical tail or vertical stabilizer and this is the airplane for suppose like this and z is here so if it has to turn like this that means some force has to act here right so vertical stabilizer 
will play that role will generate yawing moment which will try to help in giving static stability in the directional case. But always remember one thing this directional case that is motion about z axis and the motion about x axis they become coupled you know how it happens you see you could see when I am yawing we are discussing about directional motion and try to see the directional motion and lateral motion gets coupled right think these are the two wings if I am giving a positive yawing moment that is right wing going back see what is happening at the wing this wing is seeing lesser velocity because I am moving forward but the wing is going back so relative air speed here is less whereas relative here in the left wing on the left wing is more so lift here will be more so naturally if lift here is more compared to this this will also bank so that means what is happening as I am yawing I automatically get banged so I can say the directional motion and the lateral motion they get coupled but we will be now studying directional stability separately then lateral stability separately then we will discuss about their coupling etc etc okay this thing will not happen for longitudinal case for a small rate or small change in angle of attack it will not influence anything about other directional or lateral case at small angle of attack okay so let us come back to directional stability what does it mean we have to define something called side slip angle for example suppose this is the path and the aircraft and this is the velocity direction and this is the fuselage reference line. So now the relative air speed I can write it as if it is coming in this direction right when I say relative air means it is a relative to aircraft right. So now what is happening actually the airplane is moving like this okay not like this for normal case if I am flying a machine I am going like this but here actually if you see instead of this I am actually going like this. So this angle beta is called side slip angle is it clear I repeat again if this is the line center line and if I am flying like this and relative air is coming like this this is the axis this angle is beta which is called side slip angle and this will have an effect on the directional stability we will see how the airplane gives a response to such beta such side slip angle to ensure that it is having some sort of a static stability in the directional case right. Now this uh, beta is let us say I call side slip angle soon you will realize that how important is vertical tail to ensure that it does have static stability in directional case. So you let us try to understand what is the meaning of static stability we have seen that static stability means if a body is disturbed from its equilibrium state and if it has initial tendency to come back to the equilibrium then you say the body possesses static stability okay. Now let us say this body was flying like this beta equal to 0 mostly the pilot will fly a machine at beta equal to 0 so for all practical purpose beta equal to 0 is the equilibrium state for an airplane. There are some one or two occasions during special landing or when you try to reduce the speed increase the drag for some specific purpose that also you will come to know the pilot may tend to fly at a particular yaw angle or particular side slip angle more accurately side slip angle it is not yaw angle yaw angle by convention is different than side slip angle which we will be discussing as we go forward let us talk only about beta and that is side slip angle. So if a pilot is flying at beta equal to 0 and let us say there are some uh, wind coming from right hand side. So this will make the relative air speed this way 
and so this will introduce a beta. But what is the equilibrium? Equilibrium is beta equal to 0. So the, if the airplane has initial tendency to come back to beta equal to 0, then what the airplane should do? Airplane should immediately generate a yawing moment like this, right wing going back, then only beta will become 0. Am I correct? Is it clear? So it should, for positive beta, it should generate a positive yawing moment. Why positive yawing moment? Because we know that as per the convention, right wing going back is positive. Right? Let us understand this concept little more clearly before we go to next step. We have just introduced something called beta, which is side slip angle. We have introduced symbol beta, which is side slip angle, and I have told you be careful, this is not yaw angle. We will define yaw angle later. At this point, we only restrict to beta side slip angle. And what is this side slip angle? This, this is the airplane. The top view I am taking. This is the center line. And if the aircraft CG is moving in this direction, so it is moving like this, the airplane moving like this. Okay? So this angle is beta, and beta is positive, convention wise, when you are flying the machine and the relative wind is coming from the right hand side. Okay? So, relative wind from right hand side. Okay? So, what will be the beta negative convention wise? Beta negative will be other way, if it is like this. That is beta negative. Now, you know the most of the time beta equal to 0 is the equilibrium. So, suppose I am going at the beta equal to 0 and suddenly there is a disturbance that has introduced beta. So, if it has initial tendency to make it to beta equal to 0, we say it is statically stable. That means it has to turn like this. Turn like this means right wing going back. That means it will has to generate for a positive beta it must generate a positive yawing moment. Okay? That is clear. Similarly, for negative beta, it should generate negative yawing moment. Right? Remember, for longitudinal case, it was for positive alpha, longitudinal case, positive alpha, the pitching moment was negative to make it statically stable. But for directional stability, we are seeing for positive beta, it should generate positive yawing moment. Right? So, if I am if I'm going like this, and suddenly some wind disturbance has come, which has given a beta. So, I should be able to turn like this to make beta equal to 0. And then only we say this aircraft has directional stability. And we will also discuss how much directional stability is required as we develop our lecture. Right? If this is clear, so now see how to design an airplane so that this phenomena can happen. So what we have seen for static stability, for positive beta, it should give positive yawing moment, and for negative beta, it should give negative yawing moment. And generally, by notation, we use n for yawing moment. Okay. And similarly, we will define C n, yawing moment coefficient, by n by half rho v square s and b. See, this is moment. So, this is the force and this is the length term. For longitudinal case, we are using mean aerodynamic chord as that non length to be used for non-dimensional. We are using C bar as a length to non-dimensionalize pitching moment, but for non-dimensionalizing yawing moment or roll moment, you will see we will be using B, that is the span of the wing. Right? Wing. Okay? So, this is C n, which is also called yawing moment, yawing moment coefficient. Like for longitudinal, we had pitching moment coefficient C m for 
the rational case we have yawing moment coefficient C n and as we have understood for static stability for directional static stability we have seen for positive beta yawing moment should be positive. So, I can write C n should be positive similarly here C n should be negative okay, other uh, anyway C n and yawing moment are related like this. So, if I write C n here for and beta here and equilibrium is at beta equal to 0. So, if I draw it like this do you think this will have static stability check here for positive beta yawing moment should be positive or C n should be positive for positive beta it is negative. So, this is wrong this is not correct. So, what should be the correct thing if I draw this is as C n this is as beta then correct thing should be this equilibrium at beta equal to 0. Now, you see for positive beta it should give C n positive. So, C n positive is coming for negative beta C n negative this is coming. So, what is the meaning of this it meaning is d C n the slope of C n versus beta should be greater than 0 for directional static stability clear please recall this sort of a gra slope negative was there for longitudinal case for which C m alpha was supposed to be less than 0, but for directional case C n beta has to be greater than 0 that keep back of your mind. Okay. So, this is the condition for directional stability as far as static part is concerned. So, now see who are going to contribute towards this as all the time we do C n beta I can get from vertical tail primarily I can get from wing I can get from fuselage. Let us see first the contribution due to vertical tail ok. I am making a simplified diagram this is the center of gravity of the airplane and let us say this is the vertical tail and this is the A c of the vertical tail and I let me write this distance as L v that is distance between the A c of the vertical tail and C g of the airplane. For longitudinal case if you recall we use some term called L t and what was L t? L t was distance between A c of the horizontal tail and C g of the aircraft, but now I am using a different nomenclature L v for vertical tail because it is not necessary that horizontal tail A c and vertical tail A c will be at same point. There are very configuration where I find horizontal tail is like this and vertical tail is somewhere here. So, they can be laid out differently. So, in general I am using a term a notation L v as length between C g of the aircraft and A c of the vertical tail right. And I also know as per the sign convention and axis convention this is the x this will be the y and this is the z this is a body fixed axis. What I want to see please come back here we want to check if there is a beta disturbance given to this vertical tail whether it will generate a positive C n or not. If it generates positive C n that means C n beta because the vertical tail is positive. So, I will say the vertical tail is providing directional stability to the airplane right. So, let us see let us give a positive beta to the vertical tail and you know positive beta mean the wing if I am moving like this the relative wind should come from the right hand side. So, this is a positive beta what will happen if there is a positive beta let us also see let us see this is the vertical tail ok vertical tail I, I was moving like this. Now, suddenly there is a wind cross wind coming like this because of the relative velocity relative air velocity has become like this. So, this is a positive beta configuration because relative wind is towards my right. Now, what this beta will do this air will give a 
force on the vertical tail in this direction. Ideally, it will be perpendicular to the velocity vector, but if this is small, I can say it is something like this. What this force will do? This force will, CG somewhere here, this force will give a moment which will take right wing back. So, indeed, this will make your angular moment positive. So, vertical tail will give adequate directional stability. And let me repeat, if there is a positive beta, this will give force here and about C g, it will give a your angular moment which will take right wing back. So, that C n is positive and if we design properly vertical tail, we can get adequate directional stability because of vertical tail. If that is the understanding, let us try to formulate it. Okay. Let us see for a beta, what is the force in the y direction. Okay. We are assuming small beta. So, force will be half rho v square at the vertical tail, the dynamic pressure at the vertical tail, s vertical tail and C y because of vertical tail. Like you have C l and here we have C y. I put v 2 and show that it goes to your mind, it is because of vertical tail. So, you can see from a C y is nothing but force F y divided by dynamic pressure into area, reference area. It will come if we are doing it for overall airplane, but it is for the tail. So, we are writing as V, right. Now, what happens? This force will do what? This force will give force in this direction. I have just demonstrated this will give a yawing moment positive. So, yawing moment will be given as this F y that is half rho v square vertical tail is vertical tail C y into L v. Right? We have to ensure that in this the yawing moment whatever we are calculating it should have appropriate sign. Now, to ensure that sign we will have to do little more work because this sign convention etcetera we have defined. So, we should be very very careful. So, what is C y let us see. So, if I want to ask you what is C l we write C l alpha into alpha assuming C l naught is 0. So, what is C y? C y I will write C y beta into beta correct. Okay. That is if I make it more elaborative d c y by d beta into beta like this for d c l by d alpha into alpha for longitudinal case. Now, let us see what is the sign of d c y by d beta that is important. You could see that for a positive beta this force c y will be in the opposite direction of y. If this is the y the force will be in the opposite direction. If I demonstrate you here you see this is the x and this is the y towards you and this is z positive beta is like this. This will give force in this direction which is opposite in the direction of y. So, positive beta will give you negative force as far as axis system is concerned because y is towards you and positive beta the force is in this direction. So, I have to take care of that sign here. So, what I do I say I can understand from here the sign of C y beta is less than 0 because for a positive beta the F y is negative because why this is less than 0 we know for a positive beta F y is negative and it is negative and C y is F y by half rho v square s and of course C y beta means just take one derivative. So, naturally if this is from here if F y is negative then C y beta automatically becomes negative correct which physically also you understand I repeat again I will take this uh, register for you to get more clarified if this is the vertical tail and assume that this is the y direction because this is x y and if beta is coming like this positive that will give a force in this direction. So, it will give a negative in direction as far as force direction is concerned. So, for a positive beta the C y becomes negative or we say C y beta is negative. Okay. Please do not get confused with C n beta this is C y beta. So, now if I want to see this yawing moment here I further now go into little bit of detail to ensure the signs are consistent. So, then I write yawing moment 
is equal to half rho v square dynamic pressure vertical tail x vertical tail and for C y I write C y beta into beta into L v which is the vertical tail arm. Now, if I write it like this since we know C y beta is negative by definition the way you have defined. So, then this tells you that if beta is positive then yawing moment becomes negative which, which is not correct for beta positive although C y become negative, but it is giving a positive yawing moment that is please understand again and again I am repeating this if this is the vertical tail beta is positive C y is negative, but this is giving a moment right wing going back yawing moment positive right. So, to ensure that you are getting your moment positive, you have to put here minus sign. Now, you see what happens if beta positive, C i beta is negative, and this minus sign is there, this gives your moment positive. So, from here, if I write C n, C n will be your moment divided by half rho v square s reference in b with the span. So, this will become you are not expert nita the ratio of dynamic pressure at the vertical tail and by half rho v square free stream then S v by S you will get then L v by B you will get then C y beta into beta and of course, you have to put a minus sign here right and then what is C n beta it is very clear. So, using this C n expression C n beta is linear you have to just divide by beta here or differentiate. So, C n beta will be equal to d C n by d beta which will be equal to minus nita S v L v by S b into C y beta am I correct S b L v. So, what is the sign of C n beta here? This C n beta is because of what? It is because of vertical tail, right? So, this is because of vertical tail or vertical stabilizer. This sign will be what? Will be greater than 0 because I know this man is negative, this is positive, this is negative. So, this is positive. So, indeed, vertical tail or vertical stabilizer they are stabilizing directionally. Correct? And you could now see what is this S V L V by S B. Does it help you in thinking something similar happened in longitudinal case? That was S T L T by S C bar. So it is that time that was called horizontal tail volume ratio and this is called V V that is vertical tail volume ratio tail volume ratio. You could see that this V V this whole expression this is so important if I increase the value of V V I can increase the contribution of vertical tail towards directional static stability. What is the meaning of increasing this expression or this value is that you have to either increase the vertical tail size or increase the length of its placement from the CG or doing both. So, this is another very important design parameter when you are designing an aircraft. So, just now we finished the expression for C n beta vertical tail and we see that it is having stabilizing effect on the airplane directional stability. Is it clear to everybody? Okay. Another important thing for longitudinal case another important thing you must take a note for a longitudinal case if there is a wing here and here there was a tail horizontal tail and because of the downwash the angle was whatever angle it is being seen minus epsilon downwash angle right we, we know about this by now, but for an airplane having a beta that means the relative wind is coming like this 
Okay, that is why beta it is. Suppose this is the fuselage uh, moving in this direction. So the vortices will now be at an direction along the velocity vector, relative velocity vector. So this will give some sort of a side wash. It is analogous to a down wash. It's called side wash and denoted by sigma. And the angle of attack at the vertical tail, which was beta, now it changes to beta plus sigma. Okay, what is sigma? Sigma is the side wash. Right? There are empirical ways of finding sigma value. Okay. So now, what is happening? So what is the force? So the F y will be equal to half rho v square at the vertical tail, s vertical tail into C y beta into beta plus sigma. Right? Because now, the, because of side wash, this angle seen is beta plus sigma. So the force will be half rho v square s b c y beta into beta plus sigma. But note down, we have agreed that for a positive beta, the f y should be negative. But I don't see any negative sign here. But you know that c y beta is less than zero. So that is taken care from the value of c y beta. So if I put c y beta value say minus 0.3 or minus 0.6, the f y will be negative. Now, from here, for your clarity, yawing moment about Cg will be half rho v square vertical tail s vertical Cy beta into beta plus sigma. So, from yawing moment, how do I come to Cn? You know that I have to divide yawing moment by half rho v square s b. So, I divide it by Cn equal to yawing moment divided by half rho v square s b b the span. So, this becomes half rho v square at vertical tail. This is the dynamic pressure at vertical tail into s v into c y beta into beta plus sigma. Before I write in the ui moment expression, do not you think there is a mistake? half rho v square s u i beta into beta is the force, but I am talking about u i moment. So, moment would be what? This is the force here f y into l v, this distance would come l v that, so this term was wrong we written. So, we correct it, we write it l v, l v is the vertical surface tail momenta. Okay? Now, I am correct, I write l v and this is divided by half rho v square free stream, you know by now, s and b, the non-dimensional length has to come because it is a moment, this is force into distance the moment. And now, if I write the expression, I get C n equal to neta s v l v by s b into C y beta into beta plus sigma, right. See, I have taken S v, L v, S and B. So, this is by this is neta. So, S v, L v, S by S b, this is here, C y beta here, beta plus sigma here. What is our aim? We want to find an expression for C n beta, because we want to ensure that C n beta is greater than 0, and we are talking about only vertical tail contribution. So, what will be C n beta? So, d C n by d beta will be neta, let me write this C y beta into 1 plus d sigma by d beta. What is the sign of C n beta? C n beta is positive, right. But now, what is happening? If I go like this, I know C y beta sign is negative. But this shows that I have done something wrong in the expression. What is that wrong? Let us go back and see. Because this is extremely important for keeping the sign into mind. Let us see here. This beta I was giving f y. So, f y is here half rho v square s v c y b beta plus sigma. 
we have seen for a positive beta f y should be negative. So, and we know that c y beta is negative, so taken care of f y is negative. Now, from here when I come into moment, please see for f y, for whatever f y we are getting, it should give me a positive y in moment, right. If you see this is a vertical tail and c g is somewhere there, if there is a beta force is here, that will give a moment, so that right wing going back. So now, I have to see whether I have taken that into care or not. If you see why m is the yawing moment and I know c y beta is less than 0. So, then whole expression is becoming negative which is not correct because I know from here if c g is ahead of vertical tail which is true this beta will give this beta will give me a moment yawing moment where right wing going back. So, I have to take care of that. So, I have to artificially put a minus sign here. Please note down this is extremely important right. So, that minus sign will also continue here and this minus sign will also continue here and minus will continue here. Is it clear to you or not? Please let us go again. We know that for a positive beta this f y will generate a positive y moment, but when I am writing y moment expression like this without minus sign you know c y beta is already negative we have seen that. So, without minus sign putting here this will give me y yang moment negative which is not correct for a positive beta I should get positive yang moment this right wing going back. So, I have to put a minus sign here and that minus sign should carry and finally, I get an expression d c n by d beta as this and let us have a closer look on this expression. What expression I got is c n beta is minus neta v v into c y beta into 1 plus d sigma by d beta ok. What is v? v what is this? Could you recall similarity of this expression with longitudinal case? This is s vertical tail l vertical tail by s wing and b span. So, this is if I try to find a some sort of similarity for longitudinal case we had v h which was s t l t by s c bar and this we to refer as refer to as horizontal tail volume ratio right horizontal. So, what is this then? This is also instead of s t horizontal tail this is s of vertical tail instead of tail momentum of the horizontal tail it is vertical tail and s b s is the wing area and b is for a convention which everybody follows we have taken span inst instead of c bar. So, this becomes what this is again tail volume ratio, but for vertical tail for vertical tail very clear no doubt about it. Now, what was the role of v h? v h was you know that this was primarily giving the longitudinal stability through the horizontal tail. If tail volume ratio is higher then you will have more and more static stability. Similarly, here you see we wanted c n beta to be greater than 0 and you have seen that although minus sign is here as for our convention we know that c y beta is negative. So, this d c n by d beta is actually greater than 0. So, for a positive beta it is c n beta is positive that means, it is this vertical tail is giving directional stability ok. And who decides that not only c y beta it is also decided for a designer it is the vertical tail volume ratio. So, you can appropriately select vertical tail area or vertical tail moment arm I can put the vertical tail forward and aft or I can in a combination I can increase v v and if I increase v v that means, it will add towards more and more directional stability ok. So, let us go a little deep into this c n beta greater than 0 and shows directional directional stability we are talking about static stability we are talking about static stability. Now, what is the issue you see? Next question comes to our mind how much directional stability we want. 
And we know that if we make it very high in terms of static stability, then if you want to change from one equilibrium to another equilibrium, there is a problem. There is a lot of effort is required. We have clearly seen in longitudinal case. But see here what happens. If C n beta is very, very large, if C n beta is very large, so far, please take a note, we have only computed C n beta because of vertical tail. And because we know that primary contributor to direction of stability is vertical tail, you will soon see that there will be contribution from wing and fuselage. Most of the fuselage will be destabilizing. C n beta you see for fuselage is mostly destabilizing. We will do that. C n beta from wing, you will see if there is a sweep, it is stabilizing, marginally, yeah? stabilizing, marginally. We will see these things just to, for a continuity, keep this back of mind. If C n beta is very large, what will happen? So if C n beta is very large, physically you see, if I am flying a machine and C n beta is very large means what? The moment there is a beta disturbance, that means if there is a crosswind coming, it will have an initial tendency to nullify this crosswind effect. Okay. So that means if C n beta is very, very large, the airplane will become highly sensitive to crosswind. If wind is coming like this, it will turn like this. If it is coming from right, turn like this. So, the airplane will become highly sensitive to crosswind. That is not a good design. Right? So, there will be a debate on how much C n beta or how much directional stability I need to have. That will be a very important question uh, before we try to understand what is the directional control, how a rudder will control vis a vis the directional stability of the airplane. That is, if C n beta is very, very large, then you have to put a lot of effort on rudder to control this airplane at a particular direction okay, or particular equilibrium. Right. Thank you very much.